Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, everyone inside and outside the ballpark. My name is Novid Player, and welcome to episode 23 of the Novid Notes podcast, where we talk about many different types of creators inside of the platform. I'm your host, and with me today, I have one of the legendary world creators of this platform, uh, over 150 worlds inside of the platform, Miss Impact Sona. Sona, welcome to the podcast. Hope you're doing well. Glad to be here. Awesome, awesome. So, you know, out of curiosity, you know, because I gave a little brief introduction, but just kind of for the general listening audience, you know, what exactly do you do on, you know, VR chat itself? Yeah, since October 2020, I've been making a series of worlds that are just a bunch of different quizzes based on my just different things, anime, video games movies and tv art lecturing themes art, music artists i just make a bunch of game worlds and i don't consider myself up there with like jar or someone like that i just make something the past time make them the past time and hopefully share my past in a niche things with people Fair enough. Uh, so I was going to say, you know, because you've been you've been making worlds for a while now. So what inspired you to create the Guess That Music World series? This. OK, this is funny. Back in around. Early October 2020, me and two of my friends, we were bored one night. We went into a anime quiz world. And now this was. The most bare bones you didn't world you could think of. It was just a button, three options. But here's the thing was, since the world didn't tell you what you were actually picking, unless you could read Japanese or knew what the anime was, you would just be picking blindly. I would me and my, I would have went I could run Unity, make something better in two hours. Two hours and 30 minutes later, I made the map that is now known as the October 2020 Guest the Anime. And from there, it snowballed. I went, oh, I could do this with video games. I'm really in the last train. I could do it with last train themes. Then a month later, I said, oh, TV shows are a good way to do this. So I did TV themes. And then snowballed, snowballed, snowballed. I started making one once a week. And then in July of 2021, I added the music artist category to that, where I literally just took, hey, these are 30 songs I like, guess who did them? But it was pure spite. It was just spite because I said I could make a better world than whatever this was. Still think that one anime quiz world is still on VR chat, but it's... And I just go there from time to time to remind myself this is what started it. <laughs> I gotcha. You know, so you've you've done so many, like you said, you did different themes as it went along. So you did like uh, the the guess the anime, guess the video game, you know, guess the uh, music artist, and you also do have the guess the wrestler theme as well. Um, so I guess one of my questions for you, you know, have you ever thought about uh, doing other different genres of music as well? Well, my original idea, well, it's kind of, I did have this suggestion given to me a lot was, was guess the meme. Fair. Where it would just be like different audio memes and stuff like that. But I didn't, I could never really figure out a way to do that without it kind of getting stale after like one or two but when it comes to other themes i have started branching off into doing maps that are based around a single topic instead of being a generalized thing like currently i have a map based around just ruby music which is of course one of my favorite series i have a map based around the Lincoln, guessing the Lincoln without blah, 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 English is harder. <laughs> guessing which so album a Lincoln Park song comes up, which is literally 10, 50 Lincoln Park songs in one map. My 
of course, Linkin Park is my favorite band, so of course I made a map after. But then recently, I did a map that is the same style, but it's all Green Day. Cause I'm, but, and currently, I haven't said this yet. This is probably going to be the first time I've ever mentioned it. The next map I'm going to be doing in that type of style is either going to be guess the Metallica album or guess the Three Days Grace album. Interesting. Yeah, definitely. I mean, realistically, there are so many different amazing group like performance groups out there and music bands and whatnot. Mm. M- music bands, English words are hard. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, that that'll be that's very interesting. I'll definitely be looking forward to that myself. Mm. As a, I, I do love me some both Metallica and Three Days Grace. So that's a, that's a mm. as a musician, like there's a lot of great oh, there's a lot of great artists out there. So yeah, I'll just say with that. So originally, right, um, from what I remember, you know, you've gone through some different map changes um, when it comes to how they're presented. Um, So I know, like, back Mm -hmm. in the day, uh, they were like, I think it was like, was it hexagon or octagon shaped for each platform? And I know recently you kind of switched to, uh, I think it was triangle shaped in your most recent ones. Um, Was there any particular reason, you know, to, to do that change? Well, originally, back when I first started the world, they were just a box. It was a box on a box on a box. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally four Unity cubes made into a box. With a box with a button. With a... And I said, I'm going to do that for a while. Well, currently now, the original versions of these maps you cannot play anywhere because I have went back and we did all my original maps. So this is just a. I would literally go in, put a box down, and copy and paste. Once I finished season one, is what I call it, October twenty twenty to October twenty twenty one. Then I went to the hexagon. I think it's hexagon, the six sided one. Yeah, hexagon. Yeah. And then. I did that for all of season two, which was December 2022. No, December 2021 to the to August 2022. What the way? And then for season three was the Pentagon, the five sided one, Mm -hmm. which was, and now in season four, which is 2024, is yes, it's triangles. Well, the way, the reason I switch it up every time is because I, I say after every time I take a break from making maps, I want to feel like oh, this is gonna be new, it's gonna be different, it's gonna be fresh. Kind of like to be a bit nerdy here, it's kind of like a Doctor's Regeneration. If any Doctor Who fans are listening <laughs> or watch. It's basically the out the appearance of the world changed, but the feeling and the spirit of the world are still the same. Yeah, like I would, you can go from a map I made in 2021, and you can feel it diff, how different it is from a map from 2024. Like another good example is all my maps I made in 2024 show the Green Day map and everything after that. There's now a teleport option in the map with the Find Your Friends prefab. Which you have, which people have asked for for two years, and I finally just putting it into the world. So yeah, <laughs> I was I was gonna say with that, uh, you've definitely had, you know, so many different varieties of stuff. And actually, I do recall a few of the maps. Uh, you actually had reached out, uh, to the actual like community of VR chat. You know, kind of asking, you know, what songs should be in there. So what kind of what kind of inspired you to go out and like to do that to like have a community based guess that music world? Well, the first time I did it was for the video game music March twenty twenty three, and that map took me three months to get pe- people in to do it. I went from people I asking people I knew to literally I went into random Twitch chats. And asked people that way. Fair enough. Some I got, some I got responses, some I didn't, some I. But story actually, one of the times I got 
I asked, got banned by the streamer, then they messaged me on Discord after figuring, after finding out I was legit. <laughs> they they actually banned you from their Twitch chat because you had asked? Because it seemed like self-promotion instead of asking. Fair. I, I, I guess that's fair. That's wild, though, that they actually... That, that's wild that they actually banned you for that, though. That's... I mean, I guess that's fair. I mean, depending on who the streamer is, I guess. But that's just very yeah, but, but yeah, my thing was I like my thing was I wanted to get get like those smaller streamers into it, like the people. Like I was literally, I think the biggest streamer I had in one of my worlds was. I don't remember his name now. I feel like an asshole because I can't remember the name. <laughs> Is this big VR chat streamer? Oh, go by whiskey. Oh, okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, but because, and it's always and it's crazy because when I went in act in action, people, some people recognized me almost instantly because of the world, and it, and I didn't. There was this one, another streamer who literally didn't recognize me at first and then afterwards they remember because they do my map to regularly fair enough so i guess that's actually kind of wanting to go into the next question so going into that right so mm -hmm. knowing how many maps you've created you know how does it feel to have so many people like go and you know play your your quiz maps I honestly didn't expect that many people to enjoy them as much as they do. Like, I know how big, like, guess the anime quizzes and stuff like that are on YouTube and stuff. I was not expecting people in this game to come to one of, like, I thought I'll make one and get, like, a hundred people playing it and then I'll never do another one. Now, <laughs> that first anime map has... Let me pull it up. Has almost ninety thousand visits on it since in the four years it's been out, which is insane to me. That's yeah. I mean, that's still an amazing thing, no matter how long it was. You know, granted, I mean, if you took, let's say, if you took all of the worlds and then combined them, you know, into one number, like. I, I'd be genuinely curious to see, like, how many people overall, because there th there's so many different types. You know, you could go into the, you know, each theme, like, which theme does better. You know, this is pure analytics at this point. But, you know, it's it's definitely crazy because I've seen – there's definitely times where I get asked, like, oh, you know – there's this, you know, cool map that you guess the music. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know I know the person that makes that. And they're like, you do? And I'm like, yeah, they. I was in a public instance mm -hmm. once and and they stopped by because I, I even showed them in the world at the time because you had uh, in your little like Q&A thing on the world. It said like, oh, you might they might pop in when, you know, public instances and whatnot. And sure enough, that's that's actually how we met. And that's how, you know, we got to know each other and. As that was to be fair, that was uh, that was three years ago, actually. Funny enough, I think it was like th three. I, I want to say it's like two or three years ago, actually. But, but yeah, I was gonna say with that, <laughs> um, it's it's really cool, like how it's kind of progressed. Cause, uh, I, funny enough, um, there's I don't have any videos or anything of it, but we actually me and uh my friend Code Advanced. Uh, we actually went to uh, the newest video game one. Um, and uh, there was one level, um, I want to say it was like level three that we had gotten stumped on. And we all got sent, I think it was like level, uh, what was it? Level, I want to say it was like level six. And we got sent all the way back to level three because we didn't get it. And we're like, oh, <laughs> so we were, yeah. Now, if you haven't checked out any of Sona's maps, highly recommend it. They're an absolute fun time, especially like, you know, you do it by yourself or you can do it with friends. It's highly funny when you do it with friends and one person doesn't know, you know, an iconic song or something. Um, but anyways, back into you. So, you know, you've been doing worlds for, you know, since 2020, or at least the quiz map since 2020. 
Um, so I guess one of my questions is, um, you, you talked about how you got into it. So out of curiosity, is there any plans for any other type of like worlds like at all, or is it, you think it's just going to be like this type of map for, you know, essentially forever? Uh, that's a good, I actually am thinking about doing a puzzle type map, which Kind of the same thing, but there's a overarching plot or stuff to do. Like you still have to get sounds and stuff and find stuff in the world, but it's more of like a you ever played one of those old hidden object games you would get like on the PC at Walmart for like ten bucks. Oh yeah. <laughs> kind of like that kind of thing. Like uh my example of it would be like a demo like, uh, my example would be, like, oh, you go into a room, you get this hint, like, find the, find the book that counts the minute to midnight, and then you have to find the copy of Lincoln Park's Minute to Midnight that's hidden in the room. That'd be, that'd be pretty funny. So, so essentially, like, a puzzle-based map, essentially. Yeah. That'd be cool. I'd be, I'd be definitely interested to see something like that from you. I know, uh, I'll tell you, it's another little funny thing, uh, because I know you are very, very passionate about, uh, like, WWE and wrestling, um, so I, kind of, to before I even go into that, you know, what, what kind of drove the, um, oh, not, not the aspiration, but what, what, what essentially drove you into being as passionate into, like, wrestling? Uh, this is, it's a long story. But because of where I grew up, wrestling is kind of, it's in my blood. For the people who know what I'm about to say, I'm from Flair Country. So long live the nature boy. <laughs> but I, ever since I was little, like, I've been a fan of wrestling. Even before, even when my first memories of playing games was playing a WWE game on my PS2. The way I always describe wrestling to people is it's like live action anime. It's just these larger than life characters that actually this is another one thing I mean, since I can't explain it as well, I would say there is a video out there by Super Eye Patch Wolf about why pro wrestling is fascinating. That's a video I would like anyone who's interested about wrestling watch, because it, it it explains it better than anything I could say today. But the reason I got so into it is because wrestling was always there for me. It was always just something I could escape into. It was like how comics are for some people, how movies are for others. It was wrestling for me. I would literally remember, go- like, this is going to date how old I am. I remember going to Hollywood Video and just picking out four or five wrestling VHS tapes and renting them out. Yeah, I remember the good old days of Hollywood Video. That, uh, yeah, making me feel old with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I, I was gonna say, yeah. So with that, you know, because you know, while you do make worlds and stuff, you also do uh, like VTubing and content creation as well. And I know uh, one of the things that you do, uh, you'll make uh, you know, custom like wrestlers. Uh, I think it's like CAW. I think is what the acronym is or cause. But I know you do like whole series. That's what based on we. That. That's that's what the community calls them. It, yes, it, um, basic, this is something I've done, that's something I've done every year. The WWE games always have a great creation street. You can make almost anything you can think of. And I, I would always, going back to when I was 10, 11, 12, make all these characters, fictional characters, come up with all these gimmicks myself, think of backstory, think of all this stuff that really shouldn't matter. And then around 2016, 2017, 
whenever I first got an Xbox, no, not an Xbox One, because I had an Xbox One for 15. Whenever I got a PS4, because with the PS4 you can record directly from the system, I went, oh, I might as well upload these. And I used to do it in the jankiest way, because I would record with my PlayStation 4, put it on a flash drive, put it on my old ass laptop, which had a cracked version of Camtasia Studio Studio on it. <laughs> 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 Let edit the video, render it in 30 frames per second because you had to have the paid version for 60. Actually, I don't even know if Camtasia could do 60 back then. <laughs> and upload it. But my every creation, every creation I've made, for 2K that has been almost wholeheartedly my original idea. But heavily inspired off of real wrestlers, celebrity, fictional stuff. But I've always been that cre weird creative type who always has to make their own original character. No matter for what. If I'm into something, I always create a character for it. And I was just say 2K was just my way of doing that. For some people, it's breaking stuff in the Sims. Some people, it's playing Black Desert's character creator. Just... <laughs> but for me, it was just always... I love wrestling. I love creating these characters. Why not combine the two? And when I started uploading to YouTube, I just did... Um, might as well start sharing this with others. And then it just became, I'm going to create Ruby characters in the last ring game every year. <laughs> fair. No, that's fair. <laughs> I'll say it's, uh, because I know Ruby is also one of your, like, biggest passions uh, when it comes mm -hmm. to, like, all your passions and stuff. So kind of, you know, in kind of to go back into the same question, like, um, what what made you like Ruby so much? That one will go back to, I was a huge fan of Rooster Teeth, Red vs. Blue, Achievement Hunter, stuff like that. Mm. During one of the, I can't remember the exact season, but one of the season finales of Red vs. Blue. Which, I think it was either season 10 or season 9, it was one of those. I was watching the finale, I was like, huh, there's like half the video still going when the credits are rolling. And that's when the red trailer, the first time I ever saw Ruby, was the original red trailer. And from that moment, I was hooked. The animation, the the music, it was just all, it just hooked me. It was like this amazing choreograph. It got me into Monty Oom's style. Because I knew his animation though from the fight scenes in Red vs. Blue in the last two seasons. Then I went back watch his Final Fantasy animation. But then Ruby, then once Volume 1, the first season of Ruby aired, that, that was it. I was hooked. I was always, I watched every episode. I bought the DVDs. I literally have four of the posters hanging on my wall right in front of me. <laughs> I went to school for animation because of Ruby. That show literally saved my life. And to this day, I will spread my love for that show to anyone I can explain it to. Hence why my avatar here even has the symbol of my favorite character as a tattoo. A tattoo I actually have on the same spot IRL. Fair enough. I actually didn't know that you got the actual tattoo in the same spot. That's actually, it's actually mm -hmm. more uh, metaphorical that way. Um, <laughs> so I got to ask out of curiosity because I see you also do have the, um, I believe on your other hand, that's the Lincoln Park one, correct? Yep. I was, do you also have that one like on, uh, on that same spot or? Uh, not yet. I was planning on it. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, I'll say, um, and I'll actually throw it up on the screen, but your your emblem that you have in all the maps and stuff, you know, it had all your 
you know favorite things all your hobbies essentially uh, into one combined logo oh yeah um if i can switch it uh yeah, right. yeah, on my head as well. Yeah. So out of, out of curiosity, mm-hmm. what uh, because I've always been kind of curious about this myself. What uh, what essentially besides the passion stuff, like what made you design, you know, that logo? Um, basically, I wanted something that could be my brand. Like, it it's on my like if you go to any of my world, it this symbol is on the button. And a little cheeky thing I would like to do, all we do is, when I go into public world, and people ask me who I am, how, why are you here, I always just pull out the hat, point to the button. <laughs> hmm? I was, I'd say you probably but, got a mixed, bunch of mixed reactions in that regard, huh? Mm-hmm. That's fair. So I was going to say, it, oh, go ahead. But I also, another reason I created was, before I had my actual avatar created, that was how I always branded my profile pics. Fair enough. I was gonna say with uh, so with the kind of changes and stuff, um, you know, I, is there any is there any certain types of changes, um, like in the near future, um, when it comes to like how the guess that uh or the quiz maps, I guess I'll just call it the quiz maps. Like how the quiz maps work? Are there any are there any potential like thoughts about changes, or do you think it's just going to be the same in like how how the map works? I guess. Uh, the main thing I'm thinking of changing, well, the biggest change I've done recently is I did the change before, but now once you get level once you hit level five of any of the new worlds, you get five options now instead of four. Mm. Back in the day, it used to only be three. And then once you hit level four, it would go to four. But another thing I'm thinking of changing now is randomly, I'm going to put hard mode on for a level. Meaning, if you get anything wrong on that level, you go all the way back to level one. That is absolutely evil, and I am all here for it. That is... (laughs) Hello, everyone. Just want to interrupt the video right here. Uh, If you'd like to support me on any of my um, variety of content, uh, I do have a throne as well as a Ko-Fi, so make sure you go check that out. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Let's get back into the video. Um, I was going to say, in that regard, because I remember there were certain, um, like, certain songs that you had to choose um and it would send you if you got it wrong or if you picked like the obviously wrong answer it would send you back to level one um you know Mm -hmm. so i guess one of the one of the other things is um like how how was it uh when you first started making the maps right you know what were some kind of the difficulties that you encountered uh because obviously the vr chat sdk and unity changes was there any was there any issues going like in between like the changes throughout VR chat? Well, originally when I made the world, they were on SDK two, the old VR chat SDK. So VR chat triggers were just drag and drop, drag and drop, drag and drop. So it was easy. Mm-hmm. Once they switched to Udon, I tried to stay off of SDK. T- I tried to stay on SDK2 as long as I could until they stopped supporting it, made it deprecated. Then at that point, I thought, oh crap, how am I gonna? I'm gonna have to learn Udon. Then I had the realization that someone made Cyan triggers, which basically made Udon act like SDK2. If you ever been to the VRWare map, mm-hmm. it used to. It also uses cyan triggers. So basically, this should the transfer over from SDK2 to Udon was painless once I converted everything over. Because originally, when I converted things over, if you hit an option, it teleported everyone in the lobby instead of just you. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that was probably that was probably a challenge. But. Ever since that update, 
the only times I've ever had issues with the SDK was whenever Unity has a new update, they update to a new version of Unity. And I have to re-import the whole project because something broke. Yep. Unfortunately, I know a lot of world creators had that issue. <laughs> oh, every Unity change, at least one thing, even if it's very small, something breaks every time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, like one example, that every time I have to update the SDK, I have to keep the old VRChat examples folder outside of my project so it, cause it gets deleted every time. And I have to re-import that in, or I don't, or I lose my mirrors, I lose my world descriptor. <laughs> Everything just goes, hey, sorry, this doesn't work now. But really, I had to go in and replace the mirror prefab for every one of the 2024 worlds because updating Unity broke it. Those darn mirrors. Every time. That's another thing I remember. I tried doing this in the old map, but I could never get it to work. If you turn on the mirror in the opening room and leave it on, you would get, oh, instead of getting up to a minute of audio, you would get two seconds. Uh, oh, that's, huh. I wonder how that worked. That's a, that's a very interesting bug. No, that wasn't, that was going to be the intention to be like, oh, you just came in here for the mirror? Have fun with two seconds of audio. Oh, it's supposed to be intentional. Oh, that's funny. I was going to say, I was like, I was like, how does that work? No, that's. Yeah, if you just kept the mirror on, that's funny. But when I tried doing that, it basically doubled the size of the world. Oh, yeah, I guess it would because all the different files. Because you'd have to, yeah, that makes sense. I wonder if there's a way you could like code it to stop after a certain time. Like if, if kind of like a, if this happens, then it only plays the file for so long. Probably some scripting, realistically, you think? Yeah, but I'm not a coder. <laughs> fair. I might have modded New Vegas, but I'm not a coder. That's fair. But yeah, I would say, you know, kind of off of the world a little bit, you know, because you've, you've done some content creation in your days. So mm -hmm. out, out, of, out of curiosity, what kind of what kind of broke in the idea of doing the uh, the what is VR chat series? This is gonna date again. This is gonna date me online. That I literally got into VR chat in April 2020, April 2018. It was either April 18 or 19, it was one of those because it was around WrestleMania time. I had a gaming laptop that I would use, and I just hopped into VR chat one day because I saw. I saw the same YouTube videos everyone else saw around that time of what VR chat was. And I would just hang out in Cafe LeBlanc from Persona all the time. I would just see a bunch of wacky people, a bunch of characters. And I would say, hmm, I have, a, I have an NVIDIA Shadow Play on this laptop. I should record some of this, see what happens. And the rest is history. And then I said, I'm going to get a VR headset for this. And I made the biggest mistake I could. I bought a Windows Mixed Reality headset. Oh. Oh no. It was a Lenovo Explorer and my poor 1050. I don't know if it was a 1050 or 1050 Ti laptop would die trying to run VR. And I think it fell off my counter like five times while I was playing Beat Saber. Oh. <laughs> if you actually look at my first ever Beat Saber video, I think that was on my mixed reality headset. And my god, that thing was worse than a Quest 1. Oof. That's... Uh, not a lot of people even and remember it broke the Quest after 1. A month. Yeah, true. Yeah, they were not durable by any means. And, and now look at me. I have the $1,000 headset with the $300 DLC. <laughs> true. Yeah. Yeah, I've been constantly being badgered by some of my community. They're like, oh, you might as well just get full body tracking if you're going to start doing all this stuff. I'm like, man, 
I I have to get a, a I have to get a new computer, a new like headset. I mean, I guess I could use standable with the Quest Three if I you know wanted to go that route. But I need a new computer hands down because I I actually do run a gaming laptop, specifically an HP Victus gaming laptop, and it does good. Um, everything that I've ever done has been on HP Victus, and it it does it does what it needs to do. My old my my old yeah. my old reliable. <laughs> I know that feel. I would want before this current computer. I was running a sixteen sixty Ti for like everything. So this it was shuffling at the end, but hopefully by November this year, I'm actually gonna be upgrading once again. Hell yeah! So I can actually start recording and editing again. Definitely will be excited to see the future of that. <laughs> new upgrades means you have more possibilities who knows maybe you'll start coding <laughs> <laughs> i i thought i felt i felt that though but yeah i was gonna say with with all that in mind uh kind of some you know out of curiosity you know what what was uh what was like the most in your opinion the most funnest map to create out of all the quiz maps that would either have to be the Guess the Lincoln Park album or Guess the Ruby music. Fair. For me, because those are two, because according to Lincoln Park, my favorite band, literally, I name any of the of the albums, I could probably name at least five songs off of them. And for the Ruby music one, the Ruby music one was just so fun for me to actually go back into and just be able to just listen to the music on loop and just like there's not been a bad Ruby song in the ten years that show's been around. From the games to the anime to the actual show. Banger after banger after banger. And it was just so fun to put all of those into a map. I bet. I would say one so one of the things and I actually did see a tweet about this. Um so I don't know if you had seen the episode, but I actually did cover uh, the Ruby roleplay uh, Journey Beyond Remnant. Um, and what? Yeah, I was I was gonna say. Um, back then it was kind of on the fence about the continuation of you know Ruby, uh, or the preservation mm-hmm. of it. But now I believe, if I remember correctly, Viz Media has taken up the torch. Is that is that what I've been seeing? Yep. So that's that's super pog. Ruby fans rejoice. Mm-hmm. Um, so out of curiosity, what, what's your kind of, what's your take on, you know, Viz Media taking it over? I'm happy Viz is the one who's doing it because they have worked with the property before they helped to put, they helped translate and publish the manga back in 2016. So I know it's in good hands there. The only thing that a lot of people don't seem to get about this announcement is, Viz does not own an animation studio. They do not have an in-house animation studio. So whoever is going to animate Ruby after this, we still have to figure that out. A lot of people are hoping it's the studio, since they probably want to keep it in Texas. A lot of people are hoping it's going to be the studio that did Castlevania for Netflix. Mm, True. Yeah, that was a good series. But... With me, but my hope, I'm just happy now that Warner Brothers doesn't have it. That's the main thing I'm happy about. Because WB literally killed Rooster Teeth just to keep Josh Hoff's pockets filled. Yeah. Yeah, there was a, I, I remember seeing a lot of like flag to Warner Brothers um, in that regard. Um, but now it's in better hands, you know, Viz Media is pretty notable when it comes to their shows and stuff. So yeah, we, we love, we love to see a semi happy ending in that regard. Mm-hmm. And a little tangent off, cause I know you mentioned them before, like the, um, Journey Beyond Remnant, that will be off you. Shout out to them because I do play Weiss for them in that server. <laughs> Oh, nice! Yeah, I I remember uh, I remember them kind of introduced me in. I happened to look through the server list. I saw you're on there. I was like, oh, I know that person. <laughs> but 
yeah, it's really cool. So out of curiosity, you know, maybe from your perspective, um, you know, because you've done different types of stuff when it comes to VR chat. So, you know, as a, as a role player for, you know, vice, you know, what, what's that experience like? It's when you're playing a character that you know so well, it is fun to put your own little spin on them. And normally it's an experience once you get people who actually get the character. But since Jim Journey Beyond Remnant is a time skip from the actual show, we're not actually doing recreating stuff from the show. We're actually building onto it. So that just adds more to being able to put your own flavor onto the character. That's fair. That's fair. I'll say, yeah, that, I remember I remember talking about that with uh, Aaliyah um, in that regard. And mm-hmm. it was it was definitely definitely an interesting thing because there's so many different things you can do in that regard. Um, you know, essentially, you could literally do anything on VR chat, really. You know, so really, mm-hmm. the, the opportunities are, besides, you know, certain programs and certain uh, accessibility features, but we won't talk about that. Uh, besides that, it... Uh, you know, it, it really is limitless in that regard. Um, so I guess, because mm-hmm. uh, as we're kind of going into in-depth stuff, you know, what, for those that are, like, making worlds out there, you know, since you've done it for a while, since SDK2, um, is there any, like, mm-hmm. piece of advice that you could give to, like, any potential people who, like, want to create game worlds or or worlds in general? Optimization, optimization, optimization. No one's going to want to come to your world if you're getting 30 frames. Also, if you're doing a game world, make sure it's not some. If it's something people have done before, put your own spin on it. Like for me, for example, the anime quiz world, I made sure you actually knew what you were picking. Yeah, tool tips are very helpful. <laughs> mm hmm. But, um, a good friend of mine who makes worlds, she is pretty amazing at it. He does everything. He, he doesn't even touch Blender, and she does these amazing from, from scratch worlds. Like, um, she just came out with one from this visual novel game, um, um, Straight to Princess. She made the cabin from that game, and mm. she did it all in Unity from scratch. All the tools are out there for you to find. It just takes you time to learn it. Like for me, Cheyenne triggers was what got me making toggles and all that. For her, it would be Pro Builder, which is built into Unity. It allows you to basically three D model while in Unity. For others, it could be running using C Sharp to code into Udon, or is it tutorials are your friend, guides help all you can, and then at the end, optimization, optimization, optimization. <laughs> the world, making a world is like baking a cake. You can go all in, but is it going to taste good? That's a very way, good way to put it. <laughs> Fair enough. You can make that. 5,000 layer cake with butterscotch frosting and or you could just make the simple chocolate double fudge church for chocolate cake that is better than Walmart. <laughs> but yeah, no, definitely definitely a good metaphor in that case. So I was going to say, mm-hmm. you know, one of the things that, you know, I've seen just from just from experiencing your maps, you know, it's there's certain types of genres that, you know, um I don't think get enough I don't want to say reputation but have you ever thought about going into more like diverse like completely out there genres of music I've thought about branching out um like I make contact with this one person who want to find them in my world they are a EDM producer or expiring to be one. And they've given me a bunch of like electronic music to put into my world. 
because I don't normally listen to that kind of music. But when it comes to the music artist world, my taste in music heavily... I have diverged mostly, like, sometimes I'll go into K-pop and J-Rock. I'll put EDM, electronic. Uh, the newest world I've made for music artists, I kind of went into back into the memes of it, meme stuff. Like, I mean, I put Hedgehog on a Roomba on the newest <laughs> one, so. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, I, yeah. The meme ones are always a fun one for me because I'm like, what in the hell am I listening to right now? Something that I was always curious about in that regard, right? So you mm-hmm. you, ha- you have, what is it, like 30, 20, 30 seconds of a song on each level? Does that sound about right? Uh, For the normal, for the video game, anime, last train, and movie ones, it's only a minute. When it comes to music artists ones, you can go from 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how much of the song. Fair. So I was wondering, have you ever thought about making a, because you said you were wanting to do like a hard mode one. Um, has there ever been a thought of like maybe doing uh, like a difficult challenge of having like only like the first like couple of measures of a song or like, uh, you know, so, some that I guess in my opinion would be a little bit more difficult for those that are not like astute to the music. I was thinking I thought about it, but then I it was the be finding the balance of I want it to be hard and I want people to enjoy the music. Cause my whole with the mu with the this is for the music artist map specifically. My goal with those maps is to always get people to hear music that they normally wouldn't listen to. So why is <laughs> sounds sounds familiar if you know you know. Um, <laughs> that's kind of how I am with uh the barbershop style, so I, I get that. I get that. Hence, why I always put country into my map because I like to mess with people and fight them for saying all of it sounds the same. <laughs> I I like old country, I'm not a fan of newer country, like certain artists of newer country, but I do like the old country because it had. It, it it hit different. Realistically, it hit different. Um, but fair enough. Yeah, I was gonna say definitely some amazing things when it comes to you know all the diverse maps that you've done. Um, I I remember the April Fools ones uh, having a lot of troll songs in them, and I was those are those are fun to do as well. Hopefully, hopefully next year April Fools you can throw some more. Um. As long as the meme songs keep coming, of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say, I say we are kind of running a little bit out of time. So first and foremost, I do want to thank you for coming on the podcast. This was definitely, you know, mm-hmm. this is a fun time having you on and kind of getting to know a little bit more about you and kind of the origins of how it started. Um, so before we end it off, I do want to give you a spot to, you know, essentially let people know where they can find you and. You know, any type of links you want to promote in the description or on screen, uh, the floor is yours. So feel free to take it away. Well, first, well, mainly you can find me on, if you want to find my content, you can find me on YouTube at Impact Sona, same name as always. You can find me on TikTok at Impact underscore Sona. And I will be streaming on Twitch once I get my PC figured out. Also at Impact Sona. Follow me on. You can follow me on Twitter, not calling it X. So <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter. With, so you can get updates on my world and stuff I'm doing. Like, uh, recently I put out an update thing that I'm going to update the video game maps for this year with a new style, new font style, because I just felt like updating it. I'm trying to think of anything else because those are basically my main social media platforms. Well, so you also do have the Discord as well. Oh, yes, there's the Discord you can join if you want updates on my world, which is also the VR chat group you can join that will also take you there. But... 
best way to figure things out is just to find my link on my profile. Because my VR chat profile has all my links as well. Or just go to one of my worlds in a public instance. You'll meet me there, probably. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I would say, well, like I said, Sona, I do want to thank you again for, you know, coming on the podcast. Hopefully it was, uh, hopefully it was fun, you know, to kind of come on. I, I know, uh, sometimes it seems long because, you know, around an hour or whatnot, but hopefully I had fun nonetheless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's great. I normally go on tangent show. <laughs> Fair. No, that this podcast is full of tangents, Trust. That's that's nothing new. You are all good on that one. Um, but yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, everyone inside and outside the ballpark, this is it for episode twenty three of the Nova Notes podcast. I want to thank Sona again for coming on the podcast. Um, if you enjoyed what we talked about, you know, feel free to leave a comment down below. Maybe ask Sona a question in the comments. You know, if you enjoyed, you know, feel free to click that like button as well. And of course, if you're coming back to see the other episodes, might as well hit that subscribe button. Because why not? You're already coming back in anyway. But I do want to thank you guys so much for listening or watching, depending on the platform you're on. And I will see you in the next episode. Take care and peace.